Hi, I'm Rosie Piper. You're probably wondering why I've got such a floral name and wearing a skirt and have the voice of your Uncle Terry. Well, I'm transgender. Could you tell? So it should be noted that because I am transgender, anything you don't laugh at from this point will be considered a transphobic attack. I don't like bananas, and nor should you. Think about it. It's got the word na in it twice. And ba, like the whole word is essentially just an instruction on how you should react when you're offered one. Somebody go, hey, you want one of these? You go, ba, na, na. Transitioning is hard. What? No. I never thought it was going to be that hard. I always thought it was actually going to be quite easy. Because my first exposure to any kind of gender transition was that scene in Mrs. Doubtfire. You know the one where he walks in the room and goes, make me a woman. And it just fucking happened. You know, I thought it was going to be like that. You just call up Harvey Feierstein, quick montage later, boom, you got your kids back. But no, it's actually really difficult. It's like this endless onslaught of emotions and then this. And yes, ultimately it is rewarding to live as your true self and everything like that. But that doesn't mean that there's not difficulties along the way. Not convinced? I'll tell you a story that illustrates my point. How weirdly long is my shower? One day I was sitting on the toilet, right? This very toilet. And suddenly everything in the room got like a little bit brighter. And then just in a split second, the ceiling light cover just hit me on the head. I remember thinking, what a potent metaphor for what gender transition is like. Because yes, there will be more light, but not without pain first. I call that story the unbearable lightness of being on the toilet. A joke. Written by my nephew. I think drunks are a lot like baby giraffes. Because they have long necks and they can barely walk. My brother-in-law is drinking again. <laughs> I should call my sister. Luckily my little light ordeal I was ensconced in the safety of my own home. Had I been in public it might not have been the same thing. Because trans people in public bathrooms is always a hugely contentious issue. Here's a quick tip if you need to tell which bathroom is the correct one for any person to go into. The one that they just went into, that's the correct one. But people are afraid of us being in the bathrooms. But people don't need to be afraid. They're like bugs. We're more scared of you than you are of us. Trans people are not like bugs. Look, I'll tell you a story that illustrates my point. So I was at the pub, right? And I had to go to the bathroom. So I went to the women's bathroom because, duh, right? And I was dressed like this. So I looked a little bit more masculine than normal, okay? So I'm a bit self-conscious. More so self-conscious because I have a very deep voice, right? I have this very Barry White-esque baritone. I can't walk down the street and hum because it attracts snakes. <laughs> I'm like the Pied Piper of Redfern. Remember because my surname is Piper, it's clever. So I'm standing, I'm peeing, I've got the seat up, I'm not a monster, right? But it's quite loud, okay? And then I hear the door to the bathroom open and I'm asked a question. Now, what the question was probably supposed to be was, Hey, uh, so I've actually lost my phone and I'm calling it at the moment. Can you see it anywhere in there? The question I was actually asked was, Is there a phone ringing in your area? What the hell kind of question is that? Sounds like a goddamn infomercial. Is there a phone ringing in your area? Are you paying too much for your car insurance? More like one of those late night sex lines. Is there a phone ringing in your area? Pick it up. It could be a hot single on the other end. But as established, I was the only one there, and she can hear me peeing, so I had to respond. If I had a more feminine voice, I probably would have said something like, Honey, that is not how you speak. But the thing is, I don't have the trans voice, right? I can't just turn that on, okay? I've never tried to train my voice that way. I tried it alone in this apartment, in this very room, and I would feel less self-conscious doing this naked to you right now. Because I'm paranoid about her screaming pervert, I had to reply in some sort of feminized voice. So in a panic, I replied saying, No! I sounded like Mrs. Doubtfire. Yeah, it turns out transitioning is like that, just the catastrophic parts. May as well have run out of the stall, cake on my face, tits on fire, screaming, No phones ringing in this area, darling! To which she, quite freaked out, replied, Uh, okay. People keep asking me, Did she get her phone back? One, I don't care. Two, do you think she did asking questions like that? And a woman who should have been chastised for her inability to ask a very simple question instead walked out free and I was left there standing embarrassed and feeling like an absolute idiot. But all that happens and then you want to tell us that you're more nervous about trans people being in the bathrooms than we are? No! A poem. They said that hormones wouldn't shrink it, but now it's smaller than your average trinket. And that poem is called Peacock or my complicated feelings about my once large penis.
So, now that you know the plight of trans people in the bathrooms, maybe next time you see us in there, come up and give us a pat on the back and say, hey, you're doing all right. Actually, don't. Don't do that at all. That, that, that would be bad.